You join me now on a train bound for God's own county, yes, Yorkshire. I'm on a journey to meet an armourer to be measured for and discuss the design of a suit of armour for me. Um, this has been made possible, thank you, thank you, by the great generosity of my patrons. Now I feel duty bound not to spend their money on sweets and caps and go-karting, uh, not to blow it on myself having fun, but instead to invest in things that I otherwise would not have been able to buy were it not for their extraordinary generosity. Uh, so uh, this will be quite a big project because uh, it'll take many months to make this suit of armour and of course we'll have videos about the making of and all the various bits and then when it is complete I'll have videos to make about how the suit of armour in general performs and perhaps I'll make some, I don't know, comedy videos about me doing things in it that you might not otherwise expect someone to be you doing in a suit of armour like, uh, I don't know, going shopping or playing basketball or f going for a bike ride. Anyway, so there's lots to come. I went to Chesterfield and saw the sights. A statue of Stevenson, the railway pioneer with the model of his engine the rocket and the twisted witch's hat spire. Sights now seen, I arrived at the armoury, a workshop shed outside the old steelworks offices. Outside, a frame for bending wood for curved shields. Inside, all the glorious noise and dirt of an armourer's workshop. There were several devices for sanding and polishing and making things shiny, several more for heating things of various sizes, and scores of things for hitting things and hitting things against. Many specialist dollies, such as this one for greaves, or this one cast in solid steel from an original oh, wow. bassinet, a sort of pestle and mortar arrangement here, other ones for adding grooves and ridges and little homemade dollies or stakes sitting on the shelves. And have you seen so many hammers? Haha! -ha, I shall hit you with my gla- oh! Two chaps popped in who were making kit for their Battle of the Nations bouts. Some of their kit was lying around the place. Ah, I recognise that coat of plates from Visby. Good grief someone hit him hard. Aha! I shall smite you with my mighty... No! Oh! A shelf of source material. So we're discussing how the elbow should go and there are various options. One is to have a flat fan, which would be here. Or another one is to have this style, which curves around on the inside of the elbow. What's, what's your preference? This. Because it protects the inside of the arm. The flat fan doesn't really protect the vulnerable inside of the arm. Uh, this is built purely and simply to protect the inside of the arm, as you can see. And even when the arm is bent at its <laughs> almost at its fullest, that internal fan gives you massive protection. So even though my arm's straight, it's still protected. Bent, it's protected. Mm. He had some pieces there made for another client, based closely on an effigy from a tomb, but which were probably therefore not accurate, since stonemasons carving tombs make all sorts of compromises and mistakes. Pretty stuff, though. I then needed measuring. This now means that I'm going to be committed to not becoming fat or taking up bodybuilding because changes in body size are a little tricky to accommodate in plate steel. One issue that came up was my double jointed thumb which will require a different design of gauntlet. I've never worn a gauntlet that works with my thumb. Right, well I've just been talking to Dave Hewitt uh, about the various designs and we're going to start with the legs and the back and breast. And uh, this is what we're looking at for the legs. And it's been a difficult decision because I've had to decide whether I want it to be very gothic or very definitely English. I wanted it to be something that someone in England during the Wars of the Roses might be wearing. Um, but I also quite like the gothic look with all the fluting and so forth. And um, Dave has persuaded me that possibly these two ambitions are not compatible and that either I've got to give up some of my fluting or, uh, and, and, and look a little bit more Italian or Milanese even, um, or else I've, I've got to go gothic. And um, so it looks like I'm going to go gothic, but it's a sort of gothic that could be worn by an Englishman uh, during the Wars of the Roses. Um, and so we've been designing the, the, the fan that's going to go on the back of the knee on the, uh, on the Pauline, and somewhere we've got 
D back and uh huh. This is right. This is ah, there it is. Right. So um, there's the, the 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 fan that's going to go on the, on the back of the knee, um, which is a, a style I rather like, and we've just agreed on which way the fluting is going to go, and the back and breast. Um, and uh, this is all gonna also going to have tassets hanging from it. And here, this is, this is possibly the hardest decision so far. Do I go for the English-style tasset, which is over uh, six lanes of, what did you call them? A f fold. Fold. fold, that was it, fold. Uh, or this uh, more German style, which just has three lanes and then a shorter tasset. And I, in the end, I've gone for the Gothic. And you, will I regret it? Of course I won't, because he's going to make it look so nice that I can't possibly regret it. It will take many months to make, so don't expect to see much before next March, but still, hey, a suit of armour! Lindy Bear!